Hey, what's going on? It's Doug here. And I wanted to pop in before the episode. This one's a little bit shorter because Carl returned to the show. We were down in Atlanta for FinCon, which is always so fun. That was my fourth one. I'm also from Atlanta, so I got to visit with uh, some family. And it's, it's just a blast. Like you get to meet a lot of people that, for me, I listened to their podcast or saw them on YouTube. And everyone's just so friendly. I had a bit of a head start because when I first went in Austin, I went with Carl and Mindy. So they gave like a warm introduction, but everyone is just so welcoming. So now being my fourth year, I was able to visit with people that I've known for a few years and develop, you know, a friendship, a relationship with them. We don't talk too often. Occasionally, you know, I'll text someone or we'll exchange an email. Sometimes I'm on their email list, for example. So I'll say, Hey, this is a great email. And then we see each other once a year or so at FinCon. So super fun. I think before I started going in 2021, I heard that a lot of consumers of the content, because really FinCon is like a financial creators conference. So YouTubers, social media, bloggers, of course, although blogs have taken a nosedive, which is another story for another day. But yeah, YouTubers, podcasters, anyone in the sort of creator space is there. And then there's a bunch of financial companies that want to partner with the creators to get their message out or get their product out in front of people. And there, I mean, there's a wide range. I'm going to probably end up working with a few of the companies. I was for the first time looking for sponsors for this show and for my other podcast. So that ended up being pretty good, had some nice conversations. And like I said, in the past, I never actually was looking for advertisers. We were trying to do buy me a coffee and see how that worked out, which thank you to all the supporters. We have a couple few dozen that contribute and it's, you know, most people give about five to $10 per month, which is great. They get a little extra content, but not a huge amount. So anyway, I am looking for advertisers because the scope, the size of our show overall doesn't lend itself to really support itself through donations. So typically, at least what I have observed and, and looked around in the podcast that I listen to, they have a potentially like a Patreon or buy me a coffee. And then they also have advertisers on top of that. And it's like the the really hardcore fans, the big consumers will, you know, listen to the ads and also go ahead and donate each month. So so anyway, I'm exploring some options and we'll see how it works out. As I was mentioning, FinCon, super fun. And I think back in the day, we ended up, or not me, but back in the day, the podcast listeners or the blog readers would go and there was sort of like a social pass where you got to maybe go to the expo and had like some access where things were, but you weren't going to the talks, but you just got to hang out and, you know, chat with people that you follow, which is pretty cool. And uh, sh shout out to a couple uh, folks from the audience. I think Andrew and Adam, they, they're creators, but they're on they're sort of starting out, right? So they are listeners and we hung out with them quite a bit. And then there were tons of others. So if I if I didn't mention your name, but I know uh, Adam and Andrew, you, you made it a point to stop and chat with me, which is good. I, I wanna chat with the listeners and everything. So super fun, little plug. There is one in Portland next year. So FinCon is in Portland next year and they've actually uh, lowered the price a little bit. I don't know what, what they're going to do exactly with the pricing because early bird is usually cheap, which I, I just bought my ticket. It's 99 bucks. And I think last year, the early bird ticket was like 250 or something like that. So anyway, if you're interested and you're interested in hanging out, I'm, I'm not a, an affiliate at this point or anything like that, but you know, hunt it down. Portland is a good beer city. I haven't been there in about five years or so, six years. We're all, we're all getting older. So Anyway, check it out if you're interested. This episode is really me and Carl just kind of catching up. So this is one of the, I mean, it's one of my uh, favorite type of episode. Don't expect to learn anything. I'll, I'll be honest with you. We're kind of just shooting the shit, which is fun. And 
this is like one of the like video booths. So you're able to like book a, either a podcast booth for four people or a video booth for two. So this was a, the video booth for two. So we got that one. So if you're watching on YouTube, it's relative, I mean, it's good, high quality, I think like 4K video. And yeah, companies sponsor the, the booth. So it's really awesome. They let you do that. And then you can sign up, record whatever you want. You can get like 30 minutes or an hour. This one was 30 minutes um, for the video booth. They want to keep it turning since it's sort of a high quality situation. So anyway, long, long intro. I have some other awesome guests coming up and I can tell you about a couple of them. So we do have actually next week is Mr. Money Mustache catching up with me. So we came down to the studio here and we talk about turning 50 and being retired for 19 years. We get into a few other details like what his expenses are now. So I think one of the one of the inflection points, I mean, Pete has been blogging for many years and had a huge blog so big that he was on the Tim Ferriss show and he explained what his expenses were. And we actually revisit that to find out what they are now a few years later. So that's coming up. I also talk with uh, Sean Mullaney about estate planning, which is cool because I've been looking at the Facebook group and checking out some emails. And basically people are looking for some of these more tactical things. And I don't have, I'm not an expert in, in uh, hardly anything, but definitely not in those areas. So Sean Mullaney kind of breaks some things down. And then we have several other sort of case studies. So someone's coming tomorrow from the time that I'm recording with this, someone's coming tomorrow to talk about their journey in coast fi and slow fi and sort of semi-retirement and have a few other episodes lined up. I'm actually, I got to do an outline because Kristen is going to work with me again coming up soon. So that's Kristen Knapp from a few episodes ago. So a lot of stuff going on and with, with really the idea of doing one-on-one -on -one interviews, much easier to schedule. So it was always an issue to sort of coordinate. It's like me and Carl have to find a good time and then the other person. So it makes it a little more challenging. So just one-on-one, -on -one, much easier. And I think I'm, I'm comfortable doing, I don't think, I know I'm comfortable doing interviews. So that should be awesome. That said, we do have a sponsor today from Ghostbed. So Ghostbed, they've been working with us for, I can't even remember how long, like a year or two. They're great. I was able to hang out with Rich, who's a listener, uh, when we were at Economy in Cincinnati earlier this year. And basically, I was like, ah, you know, I'm not, I'm re not really sure about, you know, a mattress sponsor. It's not exactly what we're looking for here. But we checked out the sort of cool pillow. So that's awesome. And then fast forward, I've been able to like test more of the products and actually got a ghost bed Lux, which is one of the sort of cooler to the touch situation. So they have a cooling technology in there and I'm, I'm a hot sleeper. I'm hot all the time. It's my kryptonite. You know, when I get hot, I get grouchy. And if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm hot, it is uh, super frustrating. So the fact that we have a, a Lux and it's cool to the touch, I think it's a quilted cool to the touch cover. So super awesome. Highly recommend it. If you are uncertain, like some people are a little nervous about buying a bed online, not being able to lay, or lay on it, jump around or whatever you do to test your beds when you're at the uh, mattress store. The thing is they have a 101 night at home sleep trial. So you can go through their like two to three minute quiz, see what they recommend to you. And then there's really no risk to check it out. So I highly recommend Ghost, but they also have a ton of other accessories if you need like sort of the bed set situation. They have the split king so you could raise and lower. They also have sheets and pillows and other sleeping accessories that you might need to sleep better. So you can save 50% with the code milehighfi at checkout, or you can just go straight to ghostbed.com slash milehighfi. And thanks a lot for supporting us, Ghostbed. We do appreciate it. And finally, we can get to the show. There's gonna be a little background noise, but it's just a live energy out there on the expo floor at FinCon. Hello world, we are, Jesus. Hello world, welcome to the Mile High Fi podcast. 
I'm Carl Jensen here with my co-host. I'm Doug Cunnington. And we're coming at you from FinCon in Atlanta today. The weather is warm, the beer is cold, and the conversation is juicy. Uh, but before we kick off, I have to uh, start with a little bit delicate of a uh, topic. I'm, I'm thankful, Doug, because people who watched our last episode, which is the one where I said I quit, you'll notice we did it in separate locations. There was a little bit of an incident, which both of our, our lawyers, separate lawyers, advised us we shouldn't talk about. But Doug, I have to thank you for relaxing res the restraining order and allowing me to be at FinCon today and allowing me to be within 50 feet of you, which I know. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, we can't, well, legally, we're not even allowed to say anything more. But, but yeah, yeah. I mean, as soon as we, I think it's like once we get back on the plane and head back to Colorado, that's when it's like reinforced. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. it worked out fine. And just a little loophole. Yeah, this so. is great. Hopefully there aren't any more incidents at FinCon, but so far, so good. So far, so good, but we got a little bit more time left. And how's it been going with you, Carl, uh, FinCon-wise? It's going good. I still have my voice, but I have to tell you, we were up a little bit late yesterday, and it's it's very loud. I don't think neither of us are big like uh, big talker-type people in real life, so we don't probably don't say a lot of words, and it doesn't take much for me to lose my voice. And Started to feel a little scratchy last night. And then when I woke up, I said something to Mindy. I'm like, ah, it sounded yeah. like a frog, but then I recovered and it came back. So hopefully it lasts for the duration of this episode. Yeah. You sound pretty good right now. I was going to say my voice was totally horrible earlier today, but I have to say it's better than it has been in years past. Like there have been a couple of FinCons like where I couldn't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> By like day two, I couldn't talk. So yeah, yeah, this yeah. is pretty good. You sound good and you look good. Thank you. Thank you. You look good too. All right. Today, we're basically catching up. So we haven't uh, seen each other in a little bit. Couple gatherings so we passed each other, but we haven't got to catch up. So that's the purpose of today. Yeah. And I said I wasn't going to be on the show anymore. I kind of quit, but I just I just can't seem to quit. What's that? Uh, what's that movie, Doug? I wish I knew how to quit you. Do you know what that's a reference to? Or You know, I saw your notes here. I, I actually never saw that movie. Okay. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's Brokeback Mountain. It's a relationship and one person can't quit the other one. But I guess that's how I feel about this podcast. I try to get away and here I am back again. I so wish I could by. quit you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to have you back. And um, yeah, the show's been going actually super good without you. I was just telling some people, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Like... An anchor was holding me down, but now I'm able to fly. You know, it, it's been great. That's great. So this might be a step <laughs> back. The show is going to regress for a couple episodes, and then you'll be able to recover once you're back in Long Island. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. <laughs> I I think, yeah, I think when I get back to Long Island, it'll be it'll be good with a restraining order back in place. Yes, yeah, so I'll be on my best behavior. I I promise. So. I saw you a few weeks back and I was like, hey man, do you want a beer? And you said, no, I'm not drinking, I'm cutting back. And then I think the next day you went to Germany and started apparently drinking every day, constantly at Oktoberfest. So what have you been up to, man? You've been traveling a ton, right? Yeah, we did go to Oktoberfest. It was a two week trip, which I think was the longest trip of my life. First, I went to New Jersey to spend time with Bob Haynes. He's a big friend of the Fly Movement. He's been on the podcast before. Do you, do you remember which episode? I meant to look that up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit rusty. So Bob and I hung out in New Jersey. Then Bob and I flew to Stuttgart, Germany to attend uh, Volksfest, which is like a smaller version of Oktoberfest. Hence my not drinking. I wanted to, uh, I, I don't need to drink all the time. And I knew there'd be more of it in Germany. So I figured I'd cut back ahead of time. In Germany, they've got those huge beers that you see in the pictures. So we did that for about five days. It was a great trip, dog. I love Germany. You've never been there, correct? No, nope. haven't been. Okay. Yeah, Germany is a great place. Uh, we went to the Porsche Museum. We had a lot of good food there. I had an incident with horseradish, which was uh, very painful for a short amount of time. Yeah, and then went to the beer tent and had Oktoberfest. We wore Lederhosen. I think that's how you say the word. Okay. You know what that is? The German, like they have a uniform to drink beer in Germany. Right, right. It's like pretty cozy, right? Yeah. Leather pants. Okay. You, you told me before that you liked me in the leather pants. Right, right. I thought those, I thought those are technically chaps. Is that? <laughs> that was a different version. Uh, <laughs> okay. The leader hosen does not look like that, Doug. Okay. But, cool. Yeah. So Germany was good. And 
I mean, you got me pumped. I'm like, I want to go next year. I just couldn't make it work this time around. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to go back in actually two years because Bob cannot go next year. So I think we'll probably take next year off. But in two years, you should go with it. It's, it's going to be great. Cool. Yeah, super fun. I cannot wait to go back. One of my favorite international places to visit. Directly from Germany, I went to Cancun, and that was for the Bigger Pockets Conference, BPCon. They had a, this big conference at an all-inclusive hotel. That was super cool. Saw lots of old friends there. Then I went to Los Angeles for yet another conference and then back home. So after two weeks, back home and then flew off again to FinCon. Gotcha. Man, yeah, and you're just, you just wanted to be home for a little bit and then you're traveling, traveling, traveling. So yeah. are you uh, ready to get back home and settle down a little bit? I, I think so. I've got a funny story here on the outline. Like uh, some parts of travel, it gives me anxiety. Like you're in Germany, especially if you're in a smaller town, people don't speak English, but I had an incident on the plane flying there, it's like, a, it's an eight hour, eight hour trip. And I like a window seat because if there's any hope of me sleeping, I can rest my head against the window and hopefully pass out. You put a bunch of like your hoodie against there, but then it makes it hard to go to the bathroom. So there was one guy separating between me and the aisle. This guy gets on the plane and just starts pounding drinks. I'm like, this is great. This is a good sign. This guy's taking beer after beer. He's going to have to go to the bathroom a lot. I don't like to disrupt people. If I can, I just hold it and wait till the person next to me gets up. This guy went the whole flight without peeing once. Like, finally, I couldn't take it. I'm like halfway through, and I wasn't drinking anything, but I only hold it for like four or five hours. So I'm like, Damn. excuse me, sir, can I get up? And I thought he would at least take that opportunity to go to the bathroom, and he did not. Even then, like eight hours, Mr. Steel Bladder, I speculate maybe he had an adult diaper on, but I, I don't know. I have nothing <laughs> to prove that. Very nice man otherwise, yeah, maybe they should have sections in the plane, like more frequent peers where you got to get on more. I don't oh, know. Oh, that would be an interesting way to, you know, sort the seats, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good idea. Awesome. I do. I like the window seat myself. Yeah. Lean it, against the window. You've had some cool travel, too. I saw some of your astral photography pics from Nevada. Yeah, so I have been doing a few things. So, yeah, we went to... Great Basin National Park in Bigger, Nevada, and super cool park. Very quiet. One of the least visited parks in the whole country. So I, I would recommend it if you happen to be driving through the desert in the middle of nowhere, because nice. that's where it is. Yeah, it was it was great there. And we stayed for like five days, which is like a pretty long time for a relatively small park. But we hiked a couple of times. It's a dark sky area. So the Milky Way was like the brightest I've ever seen it anywhere. Really amazing. And I, astrophotography, it's fun. It's challenging. I don't know what I'm doing. And I think the best photo that I came out of it with is on my phone so far. Because like editing is a portion. I don't know how to do that well. So anyway, it's fun. And it was pretty, pretty cool part. So nice. Yeah. So do you get better? I remember we talked about this a little bit offline. You use your phone for your astrophotography, like the, the night setting on the iPhone. There's a specific setting, so you just get a tripod, and I imagine it's got a timer or something like that, correct? Yep. Yeah, so it could do, like, longer exposures. Okay. It looks good on the phone, but I'm pretty sure if I blew it up, it wouldn't be as good as okay. the photos I took with my DSLR. But just looking at it on the phone, it looked pretty cool. And, and yeah. I, like... You know, but boosted the colors and the saturation and made it contrasty and all that stuff. So, what do you got? What, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, Doug, I was looking through your pictures and you had a beautiful picture of Uranus. Like it, was, <laughs> it was spectacular. You you blew it up and I never seen anything like it. Yeah, I, and I I uh, put it as my my screensaver. So for the people that are just listening, I'm holding it up to Carl's Carl's face right now. It's crazy when you get your head that close to Uranus. Your phone smells a little <laughs> funny. Is that like some kind of new scratch and sniff feature? <laughs> we did see the ISS and we saw the Chinese space station and Starlink satellites at an astronomy like just talk that they did. And then they all, all just happened to coincide within about a 30 minute period or something. So it was like, oh my God, look at that. And they, yeah. you know, there were astronomers there so they could tell us like, hey, that's what that is over there. So yeah, super cool. I would, I would recommend Great Basin National Park for quiet time, a very chill place. Okay. And then we also went to Leadville for a few days. And I can't remember if I talked about this on, on the show with you before, but we went to Leadville because the highest peak in Colorado 
called Mount Albert is close by. So we're like, the weather's good. We should go check it out. So we went in the middle of the week. It was very quiet. I got a couple other Melanzana hoodies. So I have way too many of them, but they're awesome. And we were able to actually snag an appointment, like a, a cancellation. So we like kept nice. logging in and checking and got one for like 30 minutes later and went in and bought a couple hoodies. What color is your hoodie? What does this one look like? Let's see. I got one that's kind of a tan color and I got another one. This is like the fuzzy one, you know? Yeah. And then I got another one that is green, like the the hard shell, like the one you have, the Win Pro. Yep. And then I got another one, the Merino wool. So it's kind of thin, Ooh. good sun coverage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is the Merino wool one a new one? I don't remember seeing that at their store. It is new. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fairly new. So okay. super cool. Check it out. And I think that's about it. And I knew like after those... After those trips, I knew I just wanted to be home for a little while. We also had some visitors coming in and out. So anyway, we just wanted like normal, normal things going on. And I knew I was coming to FinCon a few weeks later. So October has been really chill and calm. And we're just like getting back into the routine at home. Okay. Are you sticking around for the rest of the year? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I was trying to think. I'm coming back to Atlanta another another time for a family get together. Okay. But uh, other than that, yeah, we're we're just chilling at home, no travel plans. Nice. How about you guys? Uh, I got to go to Los Angeles for my kid has a school visit. She's a senior in high school now, so we're going to check out a school there. We're going to do that in November, the weekend before Thanksgiving. And I th- oh no, we do have one other plan. We're going to see our good friends Jason and uh, Shana, who live in Arizona. Right. Yes, who you met last time we were down there too. We're going to go down and visit with them for a while. They're super people. Cool. And before we um, move on, anything else with travel? One real quick thing is I look forward to staying home. I think I've heard this quote before, so I'm stealing from someone else, but someone's like, yeah, if you want to travel all the time, you should figure out what's wrong with the place you live because it sounds like you should find a way to enjoy that a little bit more. I don't think that's super accurate. Maybe some people are just restless and don't really give a shit about having a home base, but I kind of like the balance. I want to be home probably most of the time and then have adventures, but hopefully maybe longer adventures to stay in one place for like three weeks instead of moving around all the time, which is what my last trip was, four different places in two weeks. And it was a bit overwhelming, different bad logistics, travel, car rentals, and it gets tedious. I hear that. Yeah. And it's like, if you got a good routine at home and everything's pretty comfortable and it's dialed in and you have friends around, it's like, yeah, you don't want to leave for too long yeah. traveling. And we just found ourselves just wanting to come on back home. We're, we're fortunate that, that there's so many cool things going on on Long Mile. Like I'm going to miss the big party on Saturday because I'm yeah. here. I think I'd almost rather be back. I would rather be back home, but oh, well. I changed my flights earlier because I was like, I'm not going to fucking do anything here tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. And like, I'm already... I've already seen you guys. The sooner I get back to Colorado, the sooner the restraining order goes back in place. So I'm like, I may as well. It'll be better for both of us, really, (laughs) especially you, though. (laughs) Now, before we uh, shift here, you got some cool fitness results, but I will say I have been trying to get back on the tickleball court quite a bit. I know a lot of people were asking about it. and, And I'm curious, have you been able to do some tickling? I have not. I saw you playing... I saw you playing pickleball once at the rec center, but then I went in the sauna and you, you had a, pick, a tickleball match going on in there. And uh, I know that's unconventional. It's a different version of pickleball, but you, you do what makes you happy, Doug. Seems like you're pretty good at it. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's something that has always sort of come natural to me. And I, I don't know. I, I'm just surprised there's a sport around it now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be in the Olympics soon. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Dude, you should try out. You could represent the U.S. in tickleball. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I may try to be on a club team or something like that. So, all right. Yeah. I've been trying to get on the pickleball court a little bit more. The thing is, Elizabeth is so good because she played tennis before Mm -hmm. and she's a better athlete than I am and more coordinated. Yeah. There's a number of things in her favor. So I am trying to get a little bit better. And I've actually gotten quite a lot better. Yeah. I was watching you play. So at our rec center, there's a the, the pickleball court is down there and then they've got a track. So I'd walk laps between my weight sets and I was watching y'all play. And yeah, Elizabeth nailed it. I, I, I saw you nail a couple into the net. But with that said, I've never played. So you would annihilate me like Elizabeth might kill you, but you would kill me. So I'm not, uh, I'm not disparaging you at all, but yeah. Elizabeth was better than you. I will yeah, confirm that. Clearly, clearly better. Yeah. 
So yeah, what's your fitness stuff going on? So with a lot of travel, it's obviously hard to keep up, but yeah. how's it been going? Yeah. So before I did all this travel and I'll back up a second and way back in 2017, I did a hydrostatic body composition test. Do you know what those are? They they dunk you in some water or something? Yeah. You hold your breath, you wear minimal clothes and uh, they dunk you in water and it's supposed to be the most accurate way to measure your body composition. So I'll just Look at my numbers. When I had one back in 2017, I weighed about 163 pounds, 34 and a half pounds of fat, and 20.4 fat percentage. I love numbers. I'm an engineer type, so I love keeping track of all this. So then I went back for another test right before my trip. I put on 6.2 pounds, but the cool thing is it was the same lady who did it. And when she saw my results, she's like, holy cow. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, you put on a lot of weight but it's all muscle. You actually have less fat on you now and more muscle. I'm like, holy cow. And she's like, usually when I see someone your age, advanced age, you know that dog, it's the opposite. They put on bad weight. So she said, I put on, I weighed six pounds more, but I had put on about eight pounds of muscle, which okay. I was happy with. I've been working out super hard, trying to get my workout styled in. Thanks to Brad Baird. Everyone should check out the recent interview he did with uh, Dean Turner. Dean I Turner. Think- yeah, I think that information I've been researching, strength training for years and probably been doing it wrong until I had a conversation with Brad earlier in the year. And I think it can be different for everyone, but this really works for me. And yeah, the results are there. This hydrostatic body composition test proved it. And I'll go for another one at the end of December to see what else I could do between now and the end of the year. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And in our notes, you, you wrote in the results, and I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. So you transposed a couple numbers. I reversed the fat percentage. It should have gone, yeah, that Got those it. should be reversed. But yeah, so I just to okay. reiterate, I put on six pounds of weight, but eight pounds of muscle. And you so lost two lost pounds fat. of fat, and your fat percentage went from 22% to about uh, 20%. Which is still too much. I'd like to get that percentage down, and that's the number I'm most concerned about. I noticed- yeah. I notice when that number goes down, my resting heart rate goes down, which is probably, if there's any number I really care about, it's that one. I want my resting heart rate to be low because cardiovascular health is everything, the most important thing. So, yeah. 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 Nice job. It's cool that you have the data from years past and all that stuff. So yeah, and I've never, how much did it cost to get the uh, test done? I think it was, uh, they had a two pack. It's normally like $60 for a test, but for $80, I could buy two of them. So my initial test and then my December retest. Oh yeah. So where do they do with that? It's a little bit south of us in Broomfield, maybe a 15 minute drive. Damn. So only 80 bucks for two. Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll sign up. Cause I, I've been, um, after doing some of the hiking, I was like, ah, you know what? I'm actually, I'm actually finding myself like hungry and I feel fatigued and it took longer to recover after hikes because I kind of had lower calories. I was cutting just a little bit. So I started eating more and I I felt much better eating more and I was able to hike better. So I think I put on some muscle. I don't have any of the data from years past, um, but I think I put on more muscle and I am a little softer around the edges right now. So I think once I get back to uh, to Colorado, I'm probably going to do a little cut for a few weeks and see, cause I, I'm, I just want to cut just a little bit on the fat percentage side. Okay. Um, but I don't know where I'm at from a numerical standpoint. It's just like visually, you know, yeah. you know, I want to look good. So I'm kind of curious. I have a follow-up question about your cut, but I'll say something. I started counting my calories on your advice. And, uh, because I've had a very protein forward diet, I found out like on some days I'm eating like a thousand less calories than I should. I think my, my calorie count is usually, I think it's pretty accurate. I'm pretty active. I put my weight, my yeah. height in there, it counts my fitness. So I might have been burning maybe 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day when I'm really active, walking a lot, doing my exercises. And some days I was only eating like 2,000. But the odd thing was, I wasn't even hungry because I was eating protein. Right. And, and But I did notice the weight would fall off. So back to the question I was going to ask you, when you do your cuts, what kind of differential are you looking for? I assume you're going to eat less than you're yeah. going to take in, but maybe maintain the strength exercise so you don't lose muscle. Yeah. So you create that anabolic response. Yep. That's exactly the idea. I, when I did this, I've only done this like twice. I think the first time I only, I cut maybe 300 calories a day. So it was just like a little bit less. And then the other time, I think I cut closer to 3000 from where I was. Cause I had bumped up my calories to like 3,200 or something like that. And I was like maintaining at that. 
So like, then I could cut down like a lot and still feel like pretty full. I mean, I was eating tons of food and tons of protein. So, yeah. so I may go back to 2000 just to like, you know, go into these conferences. So you end up eating horrible food, drinking way too much. So yeah, I'll see. And, and the other thing is like, you end up being hungry. You can't work out as hard. So yep. I'll have to just kind of step things down a little bit, still lift weights, but just like be a lot more or less active overall. Like I'm not going to be hiking like 10 yeah. miles or anything like okay. that. It's hard, so. man. The holidays are coming up. Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving dinner, man. Christmas oh, cookies, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. Like, Yeah, so. yeah. The, yeah, there's so many cookies and sweets around and all that stuff. Yeah. So, And I know Elizabeth is a very good baker and she loves to bake. So, uh, yeah. And so does Mindy actually. Like, get yeah. that stuff. She's like, I want to bake all these cookies. I'm like, can you do all that and just remove them from the house like immediately? And maybe I won't even be home yeah. uh, when you them bake them. Here. I yeah. smell them. I'm like, ah, I can't control it. I, I will eat all the cookies, basically. Oh, it's it's so good. So good. Yeah. So are and are you gonna be trying to cut calories as well? Or what are you what are I you don't gonna know do? What I'm gonna do when I get home. I think I might do some more strength. Okay. Through November, try to control myself around Thanksgiving and then try to do a cut for the month of December, maybe for a couple of weeks. Got it. Okay. I was listening to Mind Pump. I think they recommended like a seven hundred fifty calorie deficit. There's a lot of moving parts to this, but that comes out to like 4,900 a week, a pound of fats, 3,500 uh, calories. So they said you could probably lose around a pound of fat a week if you're really diligent and really keep counts. So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Got it. Very good. Um, another thing that kind of related to cutting calories, I've been brewing a low alcohol beer. So like 2%. And cause I have a kegerator at home and all that, and it's been, it's been good. So I could like drink a little bit, but it's less calories and less alcohol. Nice. And I mean, let's face it, like the beers we were drinking yesterday, they're like, whatever, 8%. I mean, there's a lot more alcohol in it. So I do like the taste of just a little bit of alcohol versus like complete NA. But yeah, that's been good. Do you do, you do any of the non-alcoholic beers or just a waste I, of calories? I do. I had one of the, uh, someone was handing them out yesterday. Maybe it was the Athletic. I don't know what it was. It was a yellow can, but I did have some. And I like them, but I think I like your method a little bit better because some of the, I found some of the really low alcohol beers, but they still have one or two percent. Taste really good too. They taste better than the zero alcohol beers. Yeah, almost better than, uh, I've had a lot of really good session beers in my life, which are the low alcohol ones. So yeah. I think that might be a good compromise. You just can't drink 20 to try to compensate. That, right. That would defeat the whole purpose. Though. Yeah. Although I, I talked to someone uh, last night and I guess she had, she was pounding beers and she was like, ah, I'm getting a little trash. She had like six beers apparently, but they were all non-alcoholic. So she, oh. yeah, she didn't even realize it. But and so it was just a psychological thing that she was like getting tipsy. Wow, that's that's weird. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Uranus, Doug, I see you're going to have a colonoscopy. And I know we had talked about ordering the home col colonoscopy kit from Amazon and me doing, like, we were going to do a live YouTube thing where we we're going to perform the colonoscopy live in the studio. And I think you've decided against that. Is that, uh, what are you going to go with? Oh, actually, go the doctor no, I, the I didn't kit? decide against that. Okay. You're going to do it. Okay, great. <laughs> and we're going to have the webcam so people will see Uranus in real life. Yeah, yeah, I I think so. I turned forty five, yeah. and finally, you know, we changed healthcare, so it took a little while to get on the the appointment on the list, and blah blah blah. So, yeah, I was like, I could actually coincide like my cut to go because you you don't eat for like one day, right? And Correct. Your, your diet's kind of weird, so I'm going to end up, yeah, you know, potentially cutting calories quite a bit that week, leading up to, you know, whatever all the fiber and other laxatives they give you. So I highly recommend you get the bidet installed before that because you're going to spend a lot of time on the throne and if okay. you're wiping, you're going to rough yourself up pretty good. So, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Maybe it's I just come to your place. place. You could. Yeah. You could okay. do that too. I'll show you how to use it. You could take it for a test drive. I just installed <laughs> a second one in our home actually. So you could. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Second one's fancier. It's got a little nozzle that comes down. You can aim it. It's uh, it's great. Very good. Very good. All right. What else do we got on here? Just one other thing I was going to uh, mention on the last podcast we did, which was supposed to be my final one. I complained about my life and how I've got all this stuff to do on the house. A bunch of people from the Fi community, including uh, Darren and Jolene, heard my 
please. And uh, like Jaron and Jolene already stopped by and they helped me drywall a bunch of my, uh, a bunch of walls in my basement, not in my basement, in my bathroom. So yeah, I'm so thankful. How cool is it that people just volunteer to stop by your house and help you out with stuff? I'm like, dude, I'll pay you. They're like, no, just, uh, you don't have to do that at all. We just want to help. So nice. Thankful for the five community. What a, what a nice group of generous people with apparently too much time on their hands because they're willing to come to my house and help me hang drywall. So you're making good headway on all, all the progress and everything then? Yeah, I, I think I am. It's going well. I'll get right back into it on Sunday when I get back, but I probably have about 200 hours more work to do. But a lot of that is going to be yard work that'll happen in the springtime. Okay. So yeah, it's, uh, it's getting nice. there. I want to have a lot of it done by the end of this year, like by the holidays, I guess. Okay. It'd be nice. Like we've lived in this stupid house for five years and we're still working on the damn thing. It was Supposed to be a two-year project, Doug, and then we had scope creep, COVID, and yeah, all kinds of all kinds of bad things happen. Not yeah, life is good. I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah. I guess I am complaining, but I'm telling you, I'm not. Yeah, projects take a while. I was talking to my uh, brother-in-law at uh, lunch, and yeah, he had like ongoing pro. Like it took him whatever six years to finish the basement or something like that. So I was like, oh yeah, my friend Carl, he's you know. 90% done with a lot of pieces and he's like, yeah, 90% done. That's, a, that's pretty much done, but Dude. yeah, you got to finish it before you sell yeah, it. Yeah. So. yeah. Got to get that sucker done. Well, if you come for our, our big Christmas ball, um, maybe you'll see that the house is pretty much done. I hope that that's my goal. Right on. Yeah. Well, very good. I think we have to get out of here before too long. So Carl, thanks for joining me. And I think Maybe we'll be able to record maybe like once a quarter together or something like that. Yeah, I think so. That sounds good. We should have a catch up episode. And on one of these, this is supposed to be about money, right? My high five financial independence. On one of these, we'll actually get back and have a conversation about money, I think. Which oh, yeah. Would probably be good. Yeah, I think we end up just talking about ourselves the, the whole time. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> self indulgent. We're talking about our, yeah, and parts of ourselves that no one wants to hear about. Yeah, it's like specifically they don't want to hear about yet. We keep going back to the well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. Let's uh let's go grab a beer. Cool. Thanks for lifting the restraining order. And uh <laughs> yeah, I'll see you for a couple more days at least. And then back to five hundred. Is it five hundred feet or five hundred? Yeah, I forget what it is. Uh, you, you it's not that far. It's only it's sixty nine feet. Okay, sixty nine. Yeah, that's right. I should remember that. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Carl. We'll see you later. See you, Doug. Thanks for listening to the show. That was the Mile High Five podcast, and I'm Doug Cunnington. If you dig the show, please do three things for us. Number one, tell a friend, a family member, an enemy about the show. We really don't care who you tell. Maybe forward them a specific show that you know that they will like. It's the single most helpful thing that you can do to spread the word. It's like giving us a virtual high five, and uh, actually we don't give high fives in, in person, so the virtual kind's pretty good. And more importantly, your friend or family member or even your enemy will appreciate the fact that you were thinking of them. Number two, make sure you're following or subscribed on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, whatever you're using, and that way you won't miss a show. And number three, please leave us a rating and review. We read them on the show occasionally and you might hear yours out there on an upcoming episode. Quick disclaimer. This show is not financial or legal advice. I'd actually be surprised if it sounded like it. It's really just for entertainment, and that's at least what we're hoping for. But seriously, get advice from professionals. So we'll catch y'all next week. Bye.